you see me now? Angela? Pretty Little Liars Original Sin is the story about generational trauma. We reveal slowly, or not so slowly even, when the mothers were teenagers, they were the mean girls. They were the villains, they were the bullies, and we're going to unpack the repercussions of that decades later. Our version of Pretty Little Liars is set in Millwood, and it is very much a blue collar, down on its luck town. Lindsay and I respond to this idea of timelessness. We really wanted to make sure everything felt old, that nothing was too new, that nothing had been too updated or refurbished, that the town was a bit sort of lost in time in the same way that our moms were in the 90s. All these towns like Catskill and Socrates, they're great looking towns and you kind of have a mountainous backdrop. It was still attractive, but everything sort of had a little bit of an age on it. We very consciously decided to set the first scene in the past. We meet not our little liars, but their mothers as teenage girls. We catch a glimpse of what the original sin is, the tragic death of this outcast named Angela Waters. And that's sort of our homage to so many horror movies which begin where you meet some of the characters, but not necessarily the main characters. The opening sequence was obviously the first thing that I read, and I was hooked from that moment because of how it was written. It was written with a lot of the camera moves inspired, a la Halloween. We did 25 takes of that opening sequence, special effects blowing snow and trying to move out of the way just in time for camera, a lot of choreography. We didn't want it to be a generic rave with flashing lights and like we've seen. There's old cars and there's junk. We painted banners of scenes from Inferno. Everyone thinks of Y2K and everyone was worried about technology, but this is a more analog throwback to like 19th century imagery, which was really fun. I knew that it was horror, but I didn't really expect it to be as slashery as it got, and it was so incredible and so exciting. We wanted it dynamic, we wanted it scary, we wanted to really be able to be bold to say, this is what this show is. Millwood High's Spirit Queen, Imogen Adams. There she is. With every horror movie and every horror show, the thing I always come back to and thing I always think about is Carrie. It's the most iconic horror moment in a horror movie that I can think of. Heavily influenced by the movie Carrie. So for us, it's kind of fun to recreate that, but it really took a long time to dress that. It was a very big space. The thing that was important to us was having a subversion. And what would it look like if the bully doesn't get the win, but the bully gets what's coming to her in A's eyes? <laughs> The first two episodes are bookended with a tragic fall from the rafters. We smash to black and then pick up with the aftermath of that. We did spare our audience the truly gruesome bone-breaking moment of impact to make those other reveals resonate a bit more. We wanted something that felt incredibly uncomfortable and horrifying. I remember sitting inside with makeup and she articulated the leg. As soon as everyone started going, oh, that's the response that we wanted. With horror, it's so almost as important as what you see is what you don't see. <coughs> One of the things that we're trying to do is, is there a way to break the bullying cycle in a different way than it is broken in, say, something like Carrie? Karen, you didn't deserve what happened to you. Though you barely acknowledged my existence, I wish we could have found a way to coexist. One of the most primal emotions that we as humans can experience is fear. When you're a teenager, you start to see the world for what it really is as a dangerous place. I think that's why horror and teenagers go so well and sort of a cauldron for all of those themes. 
this new take is beautiful because it's flavored in those different ways, because we bring our own perspectives and our own past to these roles. The omnipresence of A is very frightening. I think that feeling of always being watched and always being listened to makes the girls retreat even deeper into their secrets. Not just is it an emotional and psychological horror from A, they can't have their eyes closed at night and feel safe, and they can't have their eyes open and feel safe either. We are so dead. Every girl has her secrets. I don't want to sell my mom's house. Not with all these questions. Seek and follow the truth. Something very weird is going on here. Please don't tell anyone. What you gonna do about it? I feel like I'm constantly being punished for it. I know it's gonna hurt. There will be consequences. There's a word for what you did. Assault. I hate you. What do you want? There must be a reason A is targeting us. What are you all hiding? Okay, this is getting beyond dangerous now. Hello? Anyone there?